There we go. Well, thank you and good afternoon, Chair and members. I'd like to first start by thanking the Chair for co authoring this important measure and supporting LGBTQ students, their families, and educators. And I'm proud here today to be able to present to you Assembly Bill 1955, the Support Academic Futures and Educators for Today's Youth Act, or the Safety Act, which is back in the Assembly on concurrence. There's been a growing national attack on LGBTQ people with policies that explicitly require teachers to notify parents if their child identifies as transgender, being approved by Cal California school districts in numerous states, and with, since its last hearing, two additional states in our country having enacted such policies since this bill was introduced. These policies are known as forced outings. Forced outing policies harm everyone, parents, families, and school staff by unnecessarily compelling school staff to involve themselves in family matters and removing opportunities for families to build trust and have conversations on their own terms. Although many LGBTQ youth have supported families, some unfortunately continue to face rejection and are exposed to serious harm if prematurely forced to reveal their LGBTQ identity. Young people thrive when they have parental support and feeling safe uh, and they feel safe sharing their authentic selves at home. In fact, when LGBTQ youth have their parents' support, they thrive and feel safe sharing their identities with them. Unfortunately, not all young people are able to be their authentic selves, and it can be very harmful for youth to share their full identities before they are ready. This is why, due largely to the lack of acceptance for their identity, we know that LGBTQ youth make up a disproportionate amount of those experiencing homelessness as well as those in the foster care system. Forced outing policies also have a measurable impact on the mental health of LGBTQ students and student community at large and have led to a rise in bullying, harassment, and discrimination. When forced outing policies are enacted, we have seen an increased amount of calls to the crisis hotline. For instance, after Chino Valley Unified School District passed their forced outing policy, nearly 1,500 of the total number of calls were received solely from those who I identified as residents of that district. The mental health impacts experienced by residents are among the countless Californians who are heavily and negatively impacted by forced outing policies. And we know that when, when one population of the student body is bullied, harassed, or discriminated, all students are impacted. As such, the Safety Act was introduced to strengthen existing protections against forced outings of LGBTQ students in schools. And it does four things. First, the Safety Act prohibits and invalidates any policy, rule, or administrative regulation that requires forced outings. Second, this bill affirms that teachers and employees shall not discriminate based on sexual orientation or gender identity of students and shall not be compelled to disclose such identity unless required to do so by state or federal law, such as due to suspicion of, of harm. Third, this bill protects teachers from facing retaliation for simply doing their jobs, teaching and providing a safe school environment. And fourth, and importantly, the Safety Act provides parents, guardians, and families of LGBTQ students with critical resources in order to support them in working towards acceptance on their own terms without interference from outside actors. Now, by strengthening the existing protections and supporting families, we will ensure that all students are safe, supported, and not isolated due to any part of their identity, as well as ensure families are supported so that they can have personal conversations and work to family acceptance on their own terms. With me to speak in support of EB 1955 is Christy Hurst, a parent and co-founder of Our Schools USA, and Shay Stevens, a teacher and a parent herself. Also with us for technical questions, if necessary, is Jennifer Chow, the Interim Director and Staff Attorney from the ACLU. Thank you. Before we uh, proceed with uh, your first witness, I'd like to uh, call the roll to establish quorum. Mary Succi. Here. Mary Succi here. Flora. Here. Flora here. Addis. Here. Addis here. Alvarez. Bonta. Bonta present. Hoover. Here. Hoover here. McCarty. All right. We have quorum. Please proceed. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Christy Hurst. I am a public school parent of three, three children and the co-founder of Our Schools USA, a national nonprofit dedicated to protecting quality public education for all students. Parents across California contact us daily concerned about forced outing policies and the extremist school boards that pass them, expressing that forced outing is harmful, does nothing to improve education, and is a waste of public resources. After my hometown Chino passed a forced outing policy last July, I received almost 100 letters from my community. You can see for yourself, letter after letter, states that students are not safe in the school under the forced outing policy. 
It is discriminatory and it creates a climate of fear and bullying. It's not just Chino. Every time a school district even discusses forced outing, students are sent into crisis. Rainbow Youth Project reports the number one reason for a crisis call in California is, quote, my government hates me and doesn't want me to exist. Why would anyone think that? Well, here are just some of the things said publicly by my own school board in defense of forced outing. Regarding transgender people, quote, it is an illusion. It is a mental illness. A non-affirming house doesn't mean they're dangerous. Some would say a non-affirming house can actually be more healthy. Another Chino trustee likened gender identity to a, quote, death culture, stating, it's not going to end with transgenderism. You got to put a stop to it. My husband and I are lifelong Chino residents with three kids in school there. This policy is destroying the fabric of my community, and our district is on track to hit $1 million in legal fees this year. Mm. In the push for forced outing policies, members of known anti-LGBTQ plus hate groups traveled to my school board meetings to threaten and intimidate parents, teachers, and students. They've turned public meetings statewide into sites of harassment and violence. The students most impacted by forced outing feel unsafe speaking publicly. Forced outing policies harm and discriminate. We can't survive another year of this not being resolved by the state because the extremists won't stop wasting public money and resources on their political crusades. The time to resolve any ambiguity is now. Pass the Safety Act because we need quality public education for all our students. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Shay Stevens and I'm a high school teacher and mother in one of the 12 districts that has passed a forced outing policy. I'd like to share a personal story about the impact this has had on the culture and safety of our school. When we became privy to the fact that our board would be voting on this policy, the forced outing policy, we encouraged our students to come to the board meeting and be part of the democratic process. Inevitably, many in our LGBTQ student community felt compelled to attend. We all sat in our school's library listening to grown adults berate our most vulnerable students by referring to them as abominations, accusing them of pedophilia, and calling them numerous dehumanizing names. Some even brought prepared signs to hold up in front of the crowd. Only one identifying student spoke at the podium amid sneers and whispers. As I looked around the room, many of the kids sat in silence with tears streaming down their faces, unable to find the courage to stand up and defend themselves against those who are supposed to protect them. Encouraging those students to attend that meeting was the greatest mistake of my career. Since then, it has been one discriminatory policy after the next, from the ban of all flags, save the American or state flag, to attempts to ban mental health services for our students. Board meetings have gone from the traditional 45 minutes to four to six hours. We are chasing our tails, trying to do our day jobs, while also fighting to maintain a self safe and healthy environment for our students. Teachers, students, and community members are scared and intimidated to attend our board meetings. It has become blatantly clear that this push from outside political propagandists has nothing to do with parental rights and everything to do with discrimination against our most vulnerable populations. This imbalance of power made it clear that I, having the privilege of being an educator with a voice, had to come here today and speak to the damage these rogue boards are doing to our children. Student safety should never be compromised by extreme ideology. It is our duty and our obligation to serve and protect every student who walks into our classrooms. Free and fair public education is the cornerstone of democracy and our kids are watching. Please stand with educators and pass Assembly Bill 1955. Thank you. Thank you. Witness our members of the public in support of this measure, please come forward to the microphone. Again, Please only state your name, affiliation, and position on the bill. Lizzie, Lizzie Kutsona here on behalf of the California Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry and Support. Thank you. Annie Chow Annie on behalf of the California Teachers Association in support. 
Greg Pulsfer on behalf of Equality California in strong support. Jonathan Clan, behalf of Trans Youth Liberation and Support. Jorge Reyes Salinas on behalf of Arts of Living, Center for Immigrant Protection, LGBT Asylum Project, and part of our Bay Area. Contra Costa, Stop Moms for Liberty. El La Para Trans Latinas, Heart of LA Democratic Club, Kinder Future LLC. Los Angeles LGBT Center, Mixteco Indígena Community Organizing Project, National Center for Lesbian Rights, and the National Women's Political Caucus of California in strong support. Kat Best with the California Alliance of Child and Family Services in support. Rex Carpenter, Placer County. I'm in favor of this bill. Thank you. Kim Lewis representing the California Coalition for Youth and Support. Donda Wesley with Our Families, Our Voices on behalf of the organization and also on behalf of the following parents and extended relatives of trans youth who have asked me to express their support for AB 1955. Christy Barnes, Claire DeVries Folsom, Claudia Vieira Allen, Constance Basada. Elena Sobrante, Elizabeth Campbell, Emily Levy, Santa Cruz, Eric Hatch, Long Beach, Jillian Levi, Escondido, California, Jean Alonghi, Joshua Clark, Kelly Stout, Kristen Stout, Kim Mickelney, Christina Niemi, Laura Barrett, Megan Phillips, Melanie Bean, Misko Boudre, and Erica Bauman Whittier, Morgan Cotton, Nicole and David Beckstrand, El Cajon, Nicole Roberts, Paula Knoll, Quinn Booz, Renane Stokes, Stephanie Baxter, Susan Nibel, Rosita, Sylvia Romo, Tamara Maloney, Valerie Hanley, Valerie Oldham, Emily Hurley, Allie Heatherly, Marilyn Standing Horse, Ariel Rodriguez, Emily Lowe Davis, Alan Lofaso, Sacramento, Rebecca Barrett Martinez, Scott Austin Monrovia, Amy Braden, Kim Mickelney Folsom, Randy K. Stevens, Colleen Kylie, Devorah Herzog, Natalie Mercado, Elisa Lackich, Melanie Bean, Christy Stone, Amy Hines, Kim Carter Martinez, Heather Sullivan, Hillary Crosby, Kate Fulmer. There are more, but I will bear you more time away from your agenda. Thank you. My name is Mara Huey. I'm a retired teacher. I have served 35 years with the students of Sacramento. It has been my pleasure to serve for them, and I am in favor of this bill. Erin Lewis, mother of three public school students in Sacramento County, here in support of this bill. Sarah Diaz, I'm a mom of a public school student in Sacramento in support. Ryan Souza on behalf of the San Francisco AIDS Foundation in support. Thank you. Chris Myers with the California School Employees Association in strong support. Thank you. Regina Wright, resident of Yolo County in support. Madi Roby with Trans Family Support Services and Trans Youth Liberation and my colleagues Evan Johnson, Jasmine Hadid, Karen Pearson, Jocelyn Inton Campbell, Kadi Lamone, Amy Mudd, and Kathy Molig. Hello, Genesis Gonzalez on behalf of Lieutenant Governor Eleni Kunalakis in support. Thank you. Hello, Esperanza Segueda with Seneca Family of Agencies in strong support. Hello, Matthew Howery as a prior suicide and crisis counselor for the Trevor Project and a current teacher in the state of California for over a decade in strong support. Good afternoon, Dorothy Johnson on behalf of the Acts of the Association of California School Administrators. Please to support. Thank you. Tiffany Mock on behalf of CFT in strong support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Megan Subers on behalf of the Los Angeles LGBT Center in support. Good afternoon. Symphony Barbie on behalf of Planned Parenthood Affiliates of California in support. Hello, Brandon Tate with the Youth Mental Health Equity Coalition here in support. Ebony Harper on behalf of California Transcends, Trans Latina Coalition, and the Lieutenant Governor's Office Trans Advisory Council in support. 
I'm Case Fritz, the co-chair of the Sacramento Democratic Socialists of America in strong support. Emily Smet of the Sacramento Democratic Socialists of America in strong support. Hello, Tom Temprano here on behalf of Our Schools USA Carlsbad, Our Schools USA Los Angeles, P Flag San Jose Peninsula, Public Council, Public School Defenders Hub, Riverside LGBTQ Plus Pride, Stop Moms for Liberty, Tom Haman LGBTQ Plus Law Association, Viet Rainbow of Orange County, West Side Activists, Westchester Playa Democratic Club, Women's Foundation California, Yolo County Stop Moms for Liberty in strong support. Angie Gavant on behalf of GUSD Parents for Public Schools, Glendale Out, Safe Redland Schools, Westside Activists, Amani Sahadi, Trans Teen Milo Easley, and Mom Amber Easley in strong support. Good afternoon, Millie Yan, Placer County Parent in support. Good afternoon, Sabrina Naves, president of the Sacramento chapter of PFLAG, and on behalf of all of our parents, friends, families, allies, and members of our community, strong support. My name is Liam. I'm from Yolo County. And on behalf of my two amazing non-binary kids who had the opportunity to come out when they wanted, I support this completely. Scott Zuko with the Liver Coalition of San Diego, the LGBT Center in San Diego, and Christie's Place in San Diego. In strong support. Maya Steinhardt, non-binary educator in Sacramento and representative of Jewish Voice for Peace in strong support. Kathleen Fay on behalf of California State PTA in support. Luca Greco, parent in support. Howdy, Jacob Daruvala from the Inland Empire, representing Rainbow Pride Youth Alliance and Divine Truth Unity Fellowship Church in support of this bill. Thank you. Eve Bannis on behalf of the Sacramento LGBT Community Center in strong support. Daniela Zimmerman, PFLAG board member, Greater Placer County and mom, and Placer County LGBTQ Plus Center in strong support. Thank you. Anuradha Gupta, proud mom of an LGBTQ kid and board member of PFLAG Danville San Ramon Valley chapter in strong support. Thank you. Frank Treadway, Reading, Shasta County, supporter of LGBT activists and graduate of Anderson High School in 1959 where this was not an issue in support of this bill. Thank you. Diane Cannon, public school psychologist in strong support. Jessica French on behalf of Shasta United for Public Education, Stop Moms for Liberty, Shasta County, and myself, a mother of two public school children, in strong support. Carrie Fantham, Placer County mom of an LGBTQ child, in strong support. Laura Brubaker, a volunteer with Yolo County Stop Moms for Liberty, also a parent of students in the public school system, strong support. Marilyn Dykstra, the bi and LGBTQ and mother of two young adults, volunteer admin with California Stop Moms for Liberty, and volunteer admin for Alameda County Stop Moms for Liberty. Strong support. Good afternoon, Sean Harrington. I'm the father of a public school student, uh, retired law enforcement, and I'm here in strong support. Um, I am I am Isla Torres, a fifth grade student, and I support this bill. Stephanie Camacho Van Dyke, representing the LGBTQ Center OC in Orange County. I'm here in support. Frank Guzman, former school board member for Pomona Unified School District, and current uh, executive officer of Pomona Valley Pride, in strong support of the bill. Rebecca Kramer Matter on behalf of ACLU California Action in strong support. Hi, I am Katherine Gardner, public school parent of LGBTQ kid, um, also representing Our Schools USA Los Angeles, uh, Our Schools USA Inland Valley, Contra Costa, Temecula, Marietta, East San Diego. The following uh, 
citizens, Holly Ramos, Diane Dawson, Kathy Goodson, Elizabeth Stagner, Penelope Wakeman, Eric Godall, Stacey Barrows, Rob Brownstein, Alex Brownstein, Rebecca Niederlander, Stephanie Gluckman, RSLE Caesar, Don Rock, Nathaniel Rock, Abel Rock, Joshua Rock, Mark Weed Hayes, Laura Collin, Ira Irina Fix, Julie Ross, um, as well as Lou Morton, Jennifer Goldenberg, Theodore Goldenberg, Lenoya Savage Goldenberg, Anne Marie Kofer, David X. Cohen, and Patty Cohen. Thank you so much and strong support. Daniela Torres, on behalf of State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tony Thurman, in strong and proud support. Meg Weiss, I am a parent in Placer County Schools, and I'm also the chair of, um, Plas of Our Schools USA Placer County, and I'm in strong support. Nicole Morales, on behalf of Children Now, in strong support. My name is Chris Boucher. I'm a high school chemistry teacher in the Beverly Hills Unified School District and a member of the Board of Directors of the California Teachers Association and I rise in strong support of this bill. Adrian Miotti, Orange County Public High School English teacher in strong support. Mandy Redfern, public school teacher in Los Angeles County and mother of two in support. Brendan Jacoby, San Luis Obispo Tenants Union, in support. Toby Pizzotti, I'm a Washington Unified School District trustee, in strong support. Good afternoon, Janice O'Malley with AFSME California, in support. Sylvia Solis Shaw here on behalf of the city of West Hollywood and also on behalf of, um, sorry, the California Medical Association, both in support. Thank you. Renee, Renee Bayardo here as a parent today in strong support. Nicole Wordelman on behalf of the Children's Partnership in support. All right, thank you very much. Seeing no further public comments in support of the bill, uh, can we have our two witnesses in opposition to the bill? Please come to the witness table. Just two, please. Uh, we did not allow any technical advisors for the proponents, and so we will not allow it for the opposition. Yes, please. Thank you. All right, two minutes each. We'll proceed. Oh. Oh, please hit your microphone. What is happening? Oh, oh. we it didn't look like your uh, didn't sound like your microphone was working. Okay. Oh, is it working? Go. Okay. Okay. My name is Sonia Shaw. I'm the president of Chino Valley Unified School Board. For 10 years, the CDE has misled schools, falsely claiming that teachers must withhold information from parents, citing a non-existent state law granting children privacy rights against their own parents. Yet, there is no such law. Schools were convinced to deceive parents, but were caught in that lie. Teachers and parents sued, and our board, along with a few others, have implemented a policy against deceiving parents. You didn't like that, so you wrote AB 1955 using a gut and amend tactic, deceitfully claiming to establish a law that you also lied about. You know the notification policy doesn't refer to kids being gay, yet you lied again. Notification only occurs when a school actively treats gender dysphoric children by affirming a transgender identity, only when the child's asking to come out to their peers. This bill also prohibits transparency, takes away local control, violates FERPA, the California Constitution, and the U.S. Constitution. You guys up there and myself, along with the author, took an oath, and I cannot support a law that infringes on parents' constitutional rights. Chair, this weekend you absurdly claimed that if parents learned of their child's trans identity, they would beat them. Where's the data? That is also a lie. In Chino, we informed at least 12 parents of their child's transgender identity, and not one of them were hurt or abandoned before we were sued by Tony Thurman and Bonta. 
presuming parental violence is yet another law. Ask Mr. Ward what happens to a teacher who refuses to lie and inform parents about their child's gender confusion. Will they be fired and receive a $360,000 settlement like Jessica Tapia? Will parents need to sue, as in the Maribelli case? Will parents continue receiving payouts for schools deceiving them? The bill removes parents from helping their child and protects teachers like those in Spreckles who spied on middle schoolers' iPads to fill their trans club, the Elk Grove teacher who invited third graders to discuss sex and gender, the Encinitas teacher who used fifth graders to teach kindergartens to reject their bodies, but not teachers like Tapia. In Chino, we won't allow a school to lie to any parent. AB 1955 makes lying legal and a requirement in school. Let me remind you when you guys say this is your children, they, they are not your children, they are ours. Now, I heard the force outing thing. Let me remind you, how can a child come out to thousands of peers and staff members and us not be able to tell the parents? We have a duty as a school board member, and you should know best, Chair, that they need to be provided a safe environment, and to do that includes their parents. Thank you. Hello. Good, after uh, good afternoon. My name is Arian Adam Chikova, and I live in San Francisco. I'm a progressive Democrat, and I have been a CTA high school teacher for 22 years. I am a lifelong LGB activist. I am a mother of a formerly trans-identified son. 10 years ago, no students identified as transgender. Now, every class has at least a few students who identify as something other than their own sex. My son's trans identity was a result of anxiety, loneliness, and too much time on the internet like so many other youth. Sadly, these children who reject their sex believe that they were born wrong and dissociate with their natural bodies, which results in a downward spiral of their already fragile mental state. We as teachers are told, trained, mandated to accept the child's pronouncement at face value and keep this secret from parents. We game the students' records to automatically change names and pronouns depending upon the recipient and lie to parents. Senators said teachers do not want to be the gender police. That is true. Teachers also do not want to be liars or co-conspirators in the social transition of students. Parents should be trusted to make decisions for their own kids. We should not be making an assumption of guilt about parents when it comes to their own children. Teachers should nurture, not obstruct, the parent-child bond. Teachers are evaluated on how well we value and respect students' families and their role. AB 1955 obliterates that mutual respect. The Senate was filled with coming out stories, and the bill's author erroneously equates coming out as gay to the adoption of a transgender identity. Being gay carries no chance of irreversible medicalization to fit a sense of self, nor does it require active deception by schools. The time is up. Please wrap up. In children, trans ideation is almost always accompanied by other serious mental health issues. Secrecy from parents is not the answer. This Please bill will up. only hurt children. Thank you. Vote no and thank you. Thank you. Public comments in opposition to the bill, please come forward to the microphone. Again, name, affiliation, and position on the bill only. Tara Thornton, co-founder of Freedom Angels, and we all know I could stand here for hours listing Californians who oppose this. My name is Nick Wilson. I'm a retired police officer in strong opposition. Denise Aguilar, co-founder of Freedom Angels and candidate for Assembly District 13 in opposition. And let's see, Kenneth Prado in opposition, Sonia Shaw's husband, Chris Shaw in opposition, Tina Revelis, Mar Mary Aldrin, Jessica Romero, Rosario Ortiz, Rafael Hernandez, Robert Roberta Hernandez, Veronica Martinez, Michelle Montoya, Denise Valeri, Elizabeth Williams, Liz Espinoza, Laura Munoz, Claudia, Landavier, Cole Everyman, uh, Cami Lopez, Gabrielle Ingram, Lori Radcliffe, Darren Ellis, Crystal Osborne, Christina Acevedo, Christina Garnito, 
Natalie Carballo, Alexia Knight, Jessica Romero, Wendy Pellicuni, Juana Arenas, Rosario Ortiz, Ayana, uh, Fat can't read her last name, Lynette Gonzalez, Claudia Landerveer, Patricia Luna, Esmeralda Arenas, Victoria Viscari, Mania Ortiz, Dulce Zavata, Mer Monica Lopez, and Gina Moreno. I'm uh, Dr. Glenn Holstein, professional biologist from across the river in Davis. I'm strongly opposed. Thanks. Good afternoon, Erin Friday, Democrat, mother of a daughter who used to believe that she was a boy, also a member of Democrats for Informed Approach to Gender and Protect Kids California. We strongly oppose, oppose this bill. There are 3,000 members of our duty who Thank I won't you. run their names. Thank you. Nicole Pearson, founder of Facts, Law, Truth, Justice, and strong opposition to the bill, along with Amber Erling, and Angela Macbeth, Ann Calva, Bram Barbara Kangas, Blair Britt, Colleen Griggs, Dave Hawkins, Julie Asapor, Julie Schneider, Carrie Botton, Kristen Malayabas, Christy Yeager, Laura O'Neill, Liz Simons, Lindsay Metz, Nicole Ramos, Portia Fisher, Roseanne DeStanislo, Stacey Jones, Paul Jones, Rosie Avila, Lawrence Pearson, Monica Pearson, Stacey Herricks, Summer Fry, Penny Nicoli, Jacqueline Nicoli, Devin Nicoli, Eric Nicoli, Mike Nicoli, and Claire Edwards. And the list goes on, but I'll spare you. Gene Johnson, President of Merced County Republican Assembly, strongly against this diabolical bill. Monique Lopez from Whittier Parent Alliance, we strongly oppose this bill, and I am also a mother of a son that's openly gay and a daughter who is openly a lesbian. Hello, Mrs. G from Orange County, California. I'm represented here myself for my three children um, in public and private schools. And I'm here to represent um, Shan from California Parents uh, Rights Act Now and for Patty from um, Bonita Falls. Thank you, and I oppose. Penny Abraham, I'm the co-founder and chairwoman of the Iranian American Republicans of California and the group leader for Placer County Moms for, uh, for America. I'm here to oppose the bill on behalf of myself and our um, Moms for America state liaison, Ms. Barbara George. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sabrina Williams. I am here on behalf of Mom Army California. Um, I represent several battalions up and down California. We all oppose. In addition to Adam Vina, Jessica Unos, Wendy Minas, uh, Harrison Tinsley, Christina Marin, Elizabeth Nemchek, uh, Stephanie Dawson, Alicia Lal, Gabriel Britschke, Patrice uh, Belistos, uh, Robert Lopez. Hello, I am Karen Darnell, Doctor of Counseling and Registered Nurse, and I oppose this bill. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Tammy McMahon Gorens. I've been a public school teacher since 1986 and I strongly oppose this bill. My name is Bill Scott. I represent a group of uh, people in Clovis that wanna see our schools get back to educating our kids instead of indoctrinating them. This bill is just wrong, vote no. I'm Kim O'Brien. California public school teacher since 1985. I strongly oppose this bill. Janine Para from Marin County, founder of two charter schools in Marin and former board member and health advocate for families. And I strongly oppose this bill. <coughs> Jeanette Loudon from Fresno County. I am a retired nurse. I see these things and I strongly, strongly oppose. My name is Sarah Renner, 25 year teacher and advocate for students with disabilities and representative from Education Impact and I strongly oppose. Hello everyone, how y'all doing? My name is Wendell Bennett. First of all, I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God in heaven, and I'm with Make California Gold again, and I strongly, strongly, in God's name, 
oppose this. Hi, my name is Suzanne Perez. I'm a grandmother of children with Glendale Unified School District, and I strongly oppose this bill. And also for Darren Ellis. Hello, my name is Martin. I'm with Make California Gold Again, and I stand on behalf of all California parents and strongly oppose AB 1955. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah Stevens. I'm a wife of a veteran, a mother of six children, and I have an organization called Make California Gold Again and Time to Stand. I strongly oppose this bill along with Pray California, uh, TV Next, Leave Our Kids Alone, Moms on the Ground, Turning Point USA Faith, Our Watch, Blexit, Public School Exit, Take Our Power Back Show, California Moms for America, The Cross TV, The Salt and Light Council, and over 800 churches that are connected with Harvest Rock Ministries. So, thank you. We obviously oppose this bill. Hi, I'm, my name is Joshua Stevens. I am against this bill, and I'm with Make California Gold Again. I am against this bill. Hi, my name is Bella Miner. I'm a mother of a child who is a formerly self-identified trans. I strongly oppose this bill. Jessica Wagner, public school teacher and um, parent of two, um, strong opposition, as well as representing Manuk from Leave Kids Alone opposition. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cynthia Cuevas, I'm concerned mom, grandmother, and retired registered nurse. I strongly oppose this bill. My name is Max Bonilla. I'm uh, coming here on behalf of Rebuild California in opposition. My name is Rachel Bordoli. I'm a San Francisco voter, registered Democrat, mother of a lesbian, socially transitioned at school, 15 years old, believes she needs to have double mastectomy and cross-sex hormones. I'm also here with Women Are Real and with Red, um, Democrats for an informed approach to gender. Thank you. I oppose this bill with every fiber of my body. Cynthia Cravens, Democrat, um, lifelong liberal, also former candidate for uh, California State Senate District 11, and affiliated with Parents Are Not Mushrooms. Bring them back into the light. Do not keep them in the dark and um, allow them to know about their students. I definitely oppose this bill. Hi, I'm Jean Chadbourne, lifelong Democrat, Oakland resident, teacher of over 20 years, uh, a member of Women Are Real, Women's Declaration International, and part of the coalition of Boys Don't Belong in Girls' Locker Rooms or Sports, and I strongly oppose this bill. Hello, I'm Catherine McBride, 24-year substitute teacher and with California Parents Union, and I, I want to uh, s strongly oppose AB 1955 along with Tasha Williams, a uh, uh, librarian in Placer County, who are also in, we're all in Placer County, oppose this uh, anti-parent bill. So please vote no. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Sandy, We the People, speaking in strong opposition to this unconstitutional bill, and also speaking for Kathy Warner of Placer County, Deborah Caparasso of Sacramento County, Debbie Woolley from Sacramento County, Lee Fryer, Placer County, and Linda Hagen from Placer County. Please oppose this bill. Thank you. My name is Dave Capizano, and I strongly oppose this corrupt bill. Barbara Lewis Jensen, I'm a former uh, retired elementary school teacher and community college teacher, uh, the mother of a LGBTQ son and a grandmother, and I strongly oppose this bill. Good afternoon, my name is Jim Hicks from San Joaquin County, and uh, I strongly oppose this unconstitutional, nonsensical bill on behalf of myself 
I'm also the president of the San Joaquin County Republican Assembly, Harvest Bible Church, and a member of Jim Shoemaker for Senate campaign. And we, uh, we strongly oppose this. And I could read you 2,500 plus names, but I won't. But thank you for listening to us. Thank you. Hi, my name is Marilyn Hammond. I'm a mother, grandmother. I'm also on the um, Senate campaign for Jim Shoemaker. Um, I'm also representing um, many people from Harvest Bible Church and various other churches, including, um, but not limited to, Phyllis Carvalho and Cal Go Girls for Jesus, Ruth Mong, Tony Fields, Cecilia Trujillo, um, Silvana Harvest, and Carol um, Matsunaga. Thank you. I strongly oppose this bill. I'm Margie Matus from Atwater, California. I homeschooled my kids to protect them from what I was seeing in the schools. They now homeschooled their kids. I strongly oppose this bill. My name is Ellen Apodaca, and I'm a grandmother of 10 uh, grandchildren, and I oppose this bill. Laura Cate from Sacramento County, a very concerned mother and grandmother, and represent Pray California, and I strongly oppose this bill. Kim Calabro, I live in the 22nd District. I strongly oppose this bill. I am a mother and a wife of a veteran and a mental health advocate. Thank you. Jose Chavez, chairman of the North Valley Young Republicans and resident of Assembly District 13, in firm opposition of this bill. Thank you, and God bless you. Gary Grigsby, I am a resident of um, Heath Flores District as well as um, Susan Eggman's district. I'm also the treasurer for North Valley Young Republicans, the political director for Central Valley Impact Republicans, and a committee member for the San Joaquin County Republican Party, and I strongly oppose this bill. Have a great day. My name is Florentina DiGennaro, formerly Democratic, mother of three, representing Yuba County Republican Central Committee, and part of Freedom Coalition and Glad Tidings, and we strongly oppose. Good afternoon, my name is Miji Rofera. I'm from Alameda County. I'm a mother and I'm representing uh, Freedom in Education, a national parent organization. And also I'm the co-president of California Parents Advocate. And on behalf of millions of parents, I am, uh, we are strongly opposed to this bill. Good day, my name is Peggy Delgado Fava. I am the executive director for Bridge Network, a local nonprofit that works with at-risk youth, trauma, sexually exploited, and um, trafficked youth. Um, I'm also a school board trustee for Pleasant Ridge Union School District in Nevada County. And additionally, I'm a brain health professional affiliated with Amen Clinics. I strongly oppose this bill, thank you. My name is Rochelle Connor. I am the legislative liaison for Concerned Women for America, standing on behalf of thousands of families across California. Also, I am an abolitionist with the Frederick Douglass Foundation of California, one of the oldest civil rights uh, organizations in California. And we strongly oppose this bill and respectfully ask for your no vote. Hi, I'm Nancy Thornton, and I'm here with Concerned Women for America, and I urge you to oppose this bill. Hello, my name is Patricia Pistoni. I'm here also with Concerned Women for America. I'm a retired teacher and still subbing uh, from Auburn, California, and I strongly oppose this bill, hurting the children and the parents. Thank you. Please oppose it. Hello, my name is Kathy Lane. I live in Fair Oaks. I'm a business owner long term, and I strongly urge you to oppose this bill. Hello, I'm Karen Keeter. I'm from Santa Clara County. I'm a member of Youth for Human Rights 
and I very much oppose this bill because it violates the rights of parents. It's not the state who owns the child. Thank you. Good day. I'm Lisa Disbro, and I'm with Informed Parents of Contra Costa County. Women are real, real impact, our duty, Law Marindans for Education. I'm a 34-year veteran bilingual teacher who refused to undermine parents' rights, so I retired. I'm also the veteran, uh, mother of a veteran and member of Chino Hills Church, and we demand no one teach children to lie to their parents. I also am representing Brita, Lizzie, and Dan. Let me remind folks, name, affiliation, and position on the bill. Thank you. Hi, my name's Linda Rich. I'm a first-generation American. Um, I'm a Placer County mom, grandmother, and former Girl Scout leader. And on behalf of myself, my children, and my grandchildren, I oppose AB 1955, Save Parental Rights, and Keep Cal... Hello, my name is Stephanie Suela. I'm here representing my two children, six grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. I'm also a part of Rebuild California. You know, I strongly oppose this. You are not taking away my parents' rights. Hi, Heather Keller, California parent in strong opposition. Thanks. Uh, Mike Murray, on behalf of myself as a father of young children and the American Council in opposition of this bill. Lance Christensen, father of five public school children and vice president of the California Policy Center, opposed AB 1955. Thank you. Good afternoon. Brina Sheehy, representing Protection of the Educational Rights of Kids Advocacy in Opposition. Good afternoon. My name is T. I am a legislative liaison on behalf of Tulare County Coalition for Freedom. Unmasked Tulare County, Porterville Blessings of Liberty, Stand Up Sacramento County, Gabriel Ingram, Kaylee McKenna, Mr. and Mrs. Matt Werther, Mr. and Mrs. Bruce Kinberg, Cindy Timbrook, Bob and Karen Locke, Vanessa Chavez, Tanya Rice, Mr. and Mrs. Steve Gordon, Pastor Michael Clark, Rock Harbor Church Bakersfield, Calvary Visalia Church Bakersfield, Red Rover Parent and, Co and Child Coalition for Strong Mam Families United, we all stand in strong opposition of the state government overreach of AB 1955. Thank you. May God guide your decision. My name is Rachel Seisinger. I'm a public school teacher and a parent representing the education system, and I strongly oppose AB 1955. Thank you. Molly Sheehan with the California Catholic Conference in opposition. Thank you. I'm Katie Gorman. I'm also a public school teacher, and uh, I represent Shasta County Moms for Liberty in opposition of this bill. I'm Arianne Geringer. I'm a lesbian millennial volunteer for LGB Alliance USA, and I am uh, in opposition to this bill. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sherry Meek. I'm a registered Democrat from Oakland, and I'm here today in strong opposition to this bill. Hi, I'm Tom Fox, Vice President of Citizens in Support of Eldorado Hills, and I'm against this bill, which would harm children. Thank you. Cheryl Fox, retired, licensed marriage and family therapist, 20 years with a high school in the Bay Area, and I'm against this bill. Hi, <clears throat> my name's Georgia Luber. I'm on the board of Our Duty USA, and I'm a liberal Democrat, and I oppose this bill. Christine Goff, and I'm a parent and an educator and a registered Democratic voter and a member of Democrats for an Informed Approach to Gender, and I oppose this bill. Hi, I'm Lauren Wall. I'm a public health professional of over 30 years, um, lifelong Democrat with Democrats for an Informed Approach to Gender, and I'm against this regressive bill. I'm Virginia Tevlin, and I am here because I'm concerned for parents, grandparents, and all those who regret 
their um, sex change. They can't reverse it. And I strongly oppose this bill. Thank you. Hi, Elisa Overholt, Women's Liberation Front, also a member of the LGBT community and desister. I oppose this bill. Hi, I'm Marisol Candelas, a business owner in San Jose, California. I'm from the Firehouse Community Development Corporation, and I strongly oppose this bill. Hi, I'm Luis Cabrera. I'm also a business owner, and I strongly oppose this bill. Hi, I'm Alonzo Altamirano. I am a business owner in Santa Clara County, and I strongly oppose this bill. Hi, I'm Dr. Linda A. Lara. Uh, with the Truth Seekers and pastor of Star David Church in San Jose, California, and I strongly oppose this bill. My name is Dr. Sonny Lara from San Jose, California. I'm a gang expert in working with young men and women, getting them out of the gang lifestyle, and we totally oppose this bill. Hi, my name is Sophia Vera. I'm with Silicon Valley Truth Seekers. I'm also a mother in San Jose, California, and I strongly oppose this bill. Hi, my name is Filiberto Vera. I am a business owner in San Jose, California, and father of six, and I strongly oppose this bill. I'm Laura Ivanovich from Fremont in Alameda County, and I'm a mother and a future grandmother, and I oppose AB 1955. My name is Judy Martinez. I'm from San Jose, California. I work in the education system. I represent um, Silicon Valley Truth Seekers, and I oppose AB 1955. Hi, I'm Beverly Talbot from San Francisco, California. As a member of Democrats with an informed approach to gender, lesbian, gay, and bisexual alliance, and a gay resident of San Francisco. I strongly oppose this bill. No child is born in the wrong body. I'm Yvette Corcoran, resident of San Francisco, mother of two teenagers, registered nurse, and member of Women Are Real. I strongly oppose AB 1955. My name is Barbara Walker, and I'm from Alameda. On behalf of womenarereal.org and affirmingreality.com, and as a Bay Area mom of three kids who I want to protect, I strongly oppose AB 1955. Trans is not the new gay. Hi, my name is Judith Cahill. I'm a registered Democrat. I'm a mother. I'm here representing AffirmingReality.com and a member of WomenAreReal.org. I strongly oppose this bill. Good afternoon, Chair and members. My name is Karen Amagon. On behalf of the RNHA, we respectfully oppose this bill. My name is Tracy Schroeder. I've been a public school teacher for more than 20 years. I sit on parent, student, teacher support teams to help children. There must be congruency in our classrooms and in our schools to help kids. Thank I'm also- you. Good afternoon, my name is Rosalva Villanueva. I am a mother, a grandmother, and a 25 year, 25 year teacher from Los Angeles, and I oppose this bill. Hi, my name is Margot Engels. I have, have been registered Democrat in this great state for 45 years, still am, proud mother and ally of a gay son, and public school teacher, and I strongly oppose this bill. Thank you. Elizabeth Cronin, lifelong Democrat from San Francisco and 35-year member of California Teachers Association. I oppose this bill, and I will not lie to parents. Good afternoon. My name is Brandi Woods. I'm a mother of six, grandmother of five. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm a member, and I represent This is Pentecost Fellowship Memories Ministries, and we will not support this bill. Good afternoon. I'm Stephanie Dagry. I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. I'm a licensed, registered pediatric nurse. 
I'm here as a representative for California Nurses United and Take a Stand Stanislaus, and we oppose this bill. Thank you. Hello, I'm Stephen Barasa. I'm a senior member of the gay community. I'm against the classroom to gender clinic pipeline, and I strongly oppose this bill. My name is Josh Fulfer. I'm a father of three, and I strongly oppose this bill. Good afternoon. I hope you guys are having a nice day. My name is James Hoke, father, school board trustee, American, and a child of God, and I strongly oppose this bill. My name is Jessica Tapia, and I'm the California teacher who was fired for refusing to lie to students, to lie to parents, and to myself. I never had a transgender student in my class, yet was terminated on how I would hypothetically be honest with students. No. Freedom of speech no and No testifying, ma'am. Again, name, affiliation, position on the bill to be respectful of everyone else's time. I'm Mike Greer. I'm a school board member from Del Norte County. I'm on the uh, legislative committee for the uh, school Board Association. I'm a director one uh, for Humboldt Lake and so forth. I strongly oppose this. I was a CTA union president. Hello, my name is Tim Thompson. I'm a father, a grandfather, the senior pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley and the founder of Our Watch. Strongly opposed to this bill. Hi, I'm Dalila Epperson, candidate for Assembly District 30, founder of ACT Monterey Bay, president of the Republican Assembly, and we all strongly oppose this bill. Hello, my name is Faye Smith from Monterey County, and I oppose this bill. Hello, my name is Amanda Covitana from San Mateo County. I'm a long-term lesbian activist I oppose this bill as a member of Women Are Real, Women's Declaration of Independence, and Protect Kids California. Thank you. Hello, Margaret Rader, mother, former Democrat. On behalf of myself and millions of loving mothers and fathers who cannot be here today to defend their right to protect and parent their children because they are working to support and caring for those children, including Arthur Mark, Charlotte Johnson, Audra Sterrett, Amy Rush, Catherine Blankenberg, Jonna Burke, Rachel Califon, Sarah Wolf, Cherie Porter, Charlene Wilson, Laura Dixon, Beth Bourne, Rick Mortensen, Nicole Young, who's also the chapter chair of Placer County Moms for Liberty, Wendy Beal, Karen Frost, chapter chair of Los Angeles County Moms of Liberty, Robert Sawanka, Ann Sawanka, Genevieve Polisi, Chris Polisi, Alicia Contreras, Hernan Contreras, Angie Montestier, Santiago Montestier, and Jessica Anderson united in resolute objection to AB 1955. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amy Anderson. I live in Sacramento, and I'm the mother of five, now a former Democrat, and I'm here as a member of Women Are Real and another advocacy group for women in Sacramento, and... I am a special education teacher, and we strongly oppose this bill. Hi, I'm Julie Lane, a former Democrat from San Francisco and a big lesbian. I'm here with Women Are Real, the coalition of sane people, Ellen Page and all the lost lesbians, and the joint task force investigating craven politicians damaging families, especially Rob and Mia Bonta. And I strongly oppose this gut Thank amend. Thank you. 1955. You're Hi, I'm Ellen Danick. I'm here as the president of Coloradans for Sanity in the California General Assembly, and we oppose this bill. Hello, Ali Novello, co-founder of Reality Encompass Values for our women and our girls. Strong opposition. Allison Santa Ana, mother of two daughters, member of Women's Declaration International, Women's Liberation Front, and the Coalition of Sane People, and I strongly oppose this bill. Hi, I'm Jennifer Foote. I'm an education specialist and federally mandated to report on social emotional um, conditions per IEPs. I oppose this bill. I'm Kathy McKnight. I'm the state leader of the National School Board Coalition, 
and I'm representing all of our members in California in opposing a bill that's dangerous to all children, including trans children. Hi, I'm Nina Locker. I'm a resident of Yolo County and a public school educator. I absolutely oppose this bill that deceives families. Thank you. My name is Thea Blair from Davis, California. I am a mother of two, a boy and a girl, and I don't have to tell you what that is. I was a lifelong Democrat until a year ago. I'm a middle school teacher, and I highly oppose this bill. Thank you. Greg Burt, Vice President of the California Family Council in strong opposition. Mi amo es Lorena Daniela Elias Cardenale de Bajorquez, here today to represent the following affiliated groups as follows. 9th, 10th, and 11th generation Californians from the De Anza Expedition, 4th generation Mediterranean families from the Isla de Femine, families from the Slovenian Hall, a portion of Italian, Filipino, Mexican, mixed race European families from the Diocesan Appeal of Stockton. I'm an affiliated member of the Legion of Mary, families from San Joaquin County Victim Witness, a portion of the families from the Lodi Unified School District, families from St. Luke's Catholic Elementary School, I'm a mother of four Salvadorian mixed-race daughters, a certified OSHA has Whopperton site health and safety officer, and with a loving and humble heart, we are all in strong, fervent opposition of Assembly Bill 1955. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, legislators. David Bulldog of the SSV Alliance, the LA County Chapter of Moms for Liberty, Informed Alhambra, neighborhoods of the 40th Assembly District for Same Legislation, Truth Exchange, Taxpayer Oversights for Parents and Students, Parents Against Pervasive Obscenity in Our School Libraries, Goat Government, Goat Farmers for Good Government, and most importantly, Therapy First, a group of therapists around the world that advocate for therapy before affirmation. We're all in opposition. Thank you. Ethan Lee, on behalf of myself, I oppose this bill. My name is Liam Tran from uh, Orange County with uh, the group uh, Make California Go Again. I urge you guys to vote no on AB 1955. Thank, Thank you. you. Move the bill. All right, mo motion's been made and seconded. Uh, let me bring it back to the committee for questions and comments. Commissioner Alvarez. Sure. Thank you. Thank you all to members of the public for your um, for your patience as we listen to all uh, comments on both sides of this issue. I'd like to ask the author about something that was that I heard in the testimony uh, and ask for a response as a, as a parent of two young kids, um, something that I heard that I thought was important that, that, uh, that we get a chance to hear uh, from you. Um, there was an assertion made and maybe I misunderstood, but I, I think it'd be good for you to clarify that um, your bill would require that um, teachers would have to lie to parents. I heard that um, a couple of times, and so I'd like you to respond to that. Thank you for the question. I think there's a lot of, um, well, say some broader opinion, I suppose, for many of the claims that were made, uh, but on that question, uh, it's categorically false. The teachers under this bill shall not be compelled to have to be able to disclose what they are hearing. I think it's important that teachers use judgment and that's supported by a lot of research, surveys of affected individuals, and that judgment lends them, first of all, one, nothing in fact is memorialized in the bill too, um, should be inconsistent with state or federal law. As mandated reporters, if you see issues of decline, whether it's academically, socially, or you know, other, otherwise that there is an, a necessity to be able to have broader conversations to really um, circle uh, a, a loving network around that youth uh, that can be able to help understand the totality of circumstances that might be at play here. But that said, if you're coming in for a parent-teacher conference and uh, a teacher says, or a parent says, you know, uh, you know, what well, do you think my child might be transgender? Um, it is up to the teacher to be able to have that discretion. The teacher is not compelled to do so were this to be law. But through that discretion, maybe you want to have that conversation. You could say, well, maybe you should talk to your child. And you could kind of leave the teacher out of being in the middle of it. But importantly, why we had wanted to introduce this bill is because teachers just want to teach. Um, I'd like to maybe, if I could I'll, I'll allow for elaboration, refer to my teacher 
witness as well on, on how she might respond to such a question. My mic. Um, we actually dealt with this where, you know, we were being told that we needed to let parents know within 72 hours if we um, noticed that their student was non-gender conforming. And the logistics of that, to me, are impossible. To have 72 hours to not have any background in how to relay this information to families. This is a very sensitive topic to talk to pa parents about. And then to be given the directive that when we do that, we can do it by email, we can do it in a letter home, or we can do it in a phone call home. As a parent myself, I can't imagine receiving that letter or that phone call in that way. I, as an English teacher, do not have the ability to have these conversations it, these sensitive topics are outside of my purview of teaching English. And I don't think it's fair to the student or the parent for me to be the go-between there. And that's how most of our teachers feel. We did a survey with our teachers and they all feel the majority, I won't say all, but the majority, 93% feel the same way. If can I, I can interject add. for clarity, uh, please? Let's give her an uh, opportunity to uh, to, to uh, complete the comments and we'll give you an Thank you. If I could add as well, an important element to this bill is the fourth provision that also requires proactive resources so that if there is some tension there and you're not sure whether or not sharing this information is smart, um, you can refer uh, individuals uh, to other resources that are community-based, whether it's peer support groups or counseling services or you know, a menu of options to be able to have that, that conversation. Thank you. All right. Could I add as a teacher? Sorry, as well? Yes. Uh, you turn on your microphone. The teacher was never required to tell the parent. That was admin who goes through training to be able to have these kinds of conversations. And number two, what happens in a classroom where the child already said they wanted to be identified as another gender and the parent just shows up or an award ceremony are we going to force the kid to have two different identities one at school one at home is the teacher going to ask the other children to lie and say when this person's parents come or grandparents you're to refer back to them to their birth name that's that's a problem that creates a lot of stress on a child and and again i want to reiterate we had a current pol a previous policy that kept secrets only in regards to this and you as a parent i would never as a school board member, I would never ever want somebody to keep something like that that sensitive. And I think we need to remember when the admin goes to sit with the child when they wanna change that unofficial or official record, they ask, does your parents know? No, why? Are you in harm? Are you, are you going to be harmed? Are you in trouble? At that point, the child is able to say if they're going to be harmed or they think their parents are gonna hurt them and we get them the help. How are we all gonna sit up here and say that these kids are gonna be abused and not have any policies in place to make sure that these kids that are getting abused are put in a safe, a safe space? That doesn't make sense to me. So I wanna say that as a high school teacher, I have been asked in email form, along with many other teachers, to hide a student's identity that is in the official record at school but unknown to the parent. So in, we use ARIES, and ARIES is where we take attendance. Students' um, new name and often gender are in there without the parent's knowledge. So as also a parent of a formerly trans-identified child, I understand that, that I, as a parent, if I knew that the teacher or the s school were socially affirming my child's trans ideation, I would have the means to sue that school, and I would also be very, very upset because social transition of a child is not a neutral act. The studies and the evidence point to social transition of a child by all of their peers and all of their teachers at school can keep them thinking about and believing that something is wrong with their body for far longer than they need to. Ma'am, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, caution you that there's nothing in the bill that calls for any gender transitioning treatment. Um, and, and, and 
Sir, that's your first warning. Oh, ma'am, your <laughs> your first warning. Um, uh, please abstain from uh, disrupting the hearing, or I'm going to have to ask you to be escorted out. You may finish. Okay, so the bill says that the school, or um, does I'm not sure, but is not. Um, does not have to tell the parents, but if a child goes to a teacher or a counselor and says, I want to change my name and pronouns, now perhaps 1,500 members of the school will know, but the one person in the community that won't know are the parents. Whether these, and, and we don't know anything about the parents, and we're just going on what the child says. This is already happening, so we need to really, really educate ourselves on what social transition means at school. Thank you. Okay. Can I? No, actually. Can I, oh, oh. I'm sorry. Can I address the harm component? Um, I know that uh, Ms. Shaw made a comment that, you know, if a student says they're at risk at home, we call and we get them help and we call CPS. And I want to first make sure to make it clear that um, I also was an educator for 14 years. I'm fully credentialed. I've taught elementary, high school, and I've done administrative work. Um, so I was a mandated reporter for many, many years. And you cannot preemptively call CPS to get them help. And the fact that that is the out for that, you're placing these kids in a position to either have CPS called on their parents, which unfortunately might not result in actually getting them help uh, or go in the closet. And furthermore, when we were discussing the 12 students who were outed while the policy was in place in Chino, um, the students who came out without incident, most of those students, if not all, already had homes that knew of their gender identity. So those students were not being outed. And in fact, students could take it back. So if a student said, I want to go by this name or this gender, they were then told, hey, we're going to have to tell your parents, so you have three days, and that student could take it back, and in fact, Ms. Shaw herself was speaking publicly this weekend and said that one of the students did walk it back and take it back, and that was seen as a positive outcome. What we are doing, I think everyone in this room really cares about kids and their safety, and so it's really important for us to separate our feelings from the facts, and the fact is that when you put forced outing policies into place, you prevent students from getting any help. The policies that were in place before this were designed to bridge communication between the students and the parents. They're always encouraging students to go to their parents if they say they're not comfortable. Under forced outing, however, a student will take it back and they will stay in the closet. That is the result of these policies, those students who truly are at risk at home. No student wants to be taken out of their home by CPS. So if they think that is their option, they're gonna be furthermore not wanting to come out. Um, there was, HRC released some data this week, and they said even more that queer students who are victimized in school often don't seek help. According to the research, 44% of LGBTQ youth say they have not reported harassment to an adult at school out of fear their parents would learn their identity. A majority of sexual minority teen boys were threatened with outing by peers. So the fact is, is that if we do care about these students, forcibly outing them is going to prevent them from getting the help and support that they might need. Thank you. Any other co comments or questions from the committee? Mr. Hoover. Thank you, Mr. Ward. A um, few questions, and uh, please bear with me here, um, because obviously, you know, you're, you're bringing this bill forward on clearly a very sensitive topic. Um, you know, I think there are obviously a lot of opinions in this room. There's also a lot of considerations for this committee on whether or not this should be within the purview of local school boards or whether it should be in the purview of the state. I think um, generally like to err on the side of local control. Um, but, you know, you are also coming here as a parent, and you and I both know, as parents, um, how much parents care deeply about their children and how much they want to be a part of their children's lives. And so I think my, my first question is, when a student is working through these decisions, would you agree that um, they need people around them to support them through that? Yes. So I think... 
what I would like to know, and I and I understand, you know, the the details and and specifics in the bill, but do you think parents, to the greatest extent that they can, should be a part of that support system? In a perfect world, that would be very helpful, but it's not always a perfect situation for every individual. And and, and I understand that, and and obviously we we know that. Um, I think collectively that there are obviously a lot of amazing parents. I would say by and large, parents are very supportive of their children. Um, there's obviously some parents that aren't. But um, should they be given the opportunity to be supportive, I guess is my question. They always have that opportunity. Nothing is preventing a parent and child from having these conversations. So I guess my concern is, and, and you know, I, my office has received a lot of calls, right, on from all different perspectives on this legislation. Um, but... Uh, we've received a number of calls from parents of transgender students who strongly oppose this bill. And they oppose this bill because they want to be involved in, and to know what's going on so that they can support their child. So I guess my fear is that th what this bill is going to do is it's going to encourage parents be kept in the dark. Uh, I understand that may not be your intent, but that is essentially what I see this bill as encouraging. So how can parents both best support their student if they're kept in the dark about something as important as this? So, I, I, I like a, hold off second, on the I, applause. But, I, but, but I'll have a response, and I'd like to defer to my witness maybe for some of her, her perspective. I think, you know, coming out is a very difficult experience on top of an already difficult time in many youth's lives, it's not easy being a teenager, and it's especially not easy when you're wrestling with issues that might make yourself different than somebody else. And I think what we have conflated here is that somehow this is preventing, obstructing, or otherwise making it difficult to have those conversations between a student, a youth, and, and their parent. Those are difficult conversations, and in fact, I could tell you about the surveys, but can also tell you by personal experience that it is very difficult to come out to your parent. Um, that is the person, even though there's a loving relationship, that is the person that is hopefully the people in your lives that you're always going to have. And it's the last person that you want to reject you. Mm. And so some youth, right, they, they come out to their peers first. Because not that it's more an accepting of an environment or you're, you're sort of testing waters. And, and, and you're, 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 you're figuring out your own identity, but you're doing so in a way that is your own. It's, it's, it's by a path that's, that's of your own choosing. And that's where it's an important fundamental here that we talk about, about the issue of privacy that is embedded within an individual's right to be able to come out. And to come out to whom? and when and the manner in which they choose. Now, I'm not, I'm cisgender, and I don't know what it's truly like to be transgender, but I know people who are. And I think another issue around this bill is that there are some that just don't believe that they are real. And I've had that experience, not knowing that wrestling with your own sexual orientation, that you think that that is something that's real and natural than me. And so all this sort of tying together is to say and to answer your question, it is a difficult conversation to have. And I understand why that can be a difficult conversation, but it is a conversation that that parent and child should have. And we are trying to, through this bill, recenter the idea that schools should just be a safe environment because ultimately that is the job of our schools is to provide a safe and thriving environment so they can perform well. And some of that intersects with trying to make sure that we understand that kids are built differently, that they are real. And so when those situations arrive, how do we design something that's able to be able to support them and thrive academically? When you are jumping ahead of an individual's interest or timeline to be able to have those important conversations, um, it, it can do an incredible amount of harm. And I'd like to be able to defer to my witness maybe to elaborate further. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, primarily I am a mom and I work with moms and dads across the state all the time. And 
as a mom and as a former educator, I know that my child can, I have the right to have a conversation with my kid when we're ready. Because I know as a mom, as somebody who has a degree in child development, that my child and my relationship will be stronger if I let them come to me when they're ready versus being forcibly outed. This is just the fact we know that forcibly outing kids is detrimental to the child and to your relationship with your kid. And so as a parent, I want the right to allow my child the space to come to me when they feel safe. And if you've never experienced loving somebody who's in the process of coming out, I mean, they're always coming out. So many children will come out to one parent and then another a year later or more as they become more comfortable who they are. But kids want their parents' love more than anyone else. So it makes sense that they might test the waters with their friends at school. They're doing that constantly with who they are, figuring out who they are. That's part of being an adolescent and growing up. And my right is to allow my child that space to do that so we can develop a strong relationship as a mom and a daughter or a mom and, a, and my son. That is my right to do that. And if you take that safe space away from my child, I want them to have that spa safe space. And I trust the school because I am in the school all the time. I am talking to the teachers all the time. And I want my child to have that space to feel safe because I also know that the more adults, positive role models in my children's lives where they feel safe to talk, they have better outcomes for themselves, no. for their sense of well-being and for, for their life. And I just wanted to add a closing thought of, sure. about that too because you mentioned being, being parents in, in our discussions. I know yours are just a little bit older than in mine on the range. I'm, I'm entering preteen years. Um, it's tough. Um, it's very hard to stay connected in these conversations, and, and we're trying as parents so hard. Maybe it's not easy, certainly, with the demands of our jobs, um, but, but we're doing our best. But ultimately, I want to make sure that she is doing very well at school. I can tell she's happy at school, and I can tell that she's learning and she's thriving. And I have an immense amount of trust for the school community. And it's on me to build a better relationship with my kid, and I'm always trying. And that's, I think, the distinction that I see here that we should be from an education policy, you know, sort of aligning with. Assemblyman Hoover, I, may I say something? Uh, I think let, let's just. I'm gonna go ahead. Go ahead. When the notifications, through the, through the chair, through when the, the notifications went out, we also offered counseling to ensure that parents and the child both had the support they needed if they weren't able to have this conversation alone. And if they were able to have the conversation, we also continued to offer free support for both of them. So it, it, it gave them the resources that I would think that any parent would be appreciative. And we actually had parents thank us for those resources that were given to them in that. And I think we re need to remember, without due process, the 14th Amendment, parents shouldn't be deemed dangerous to their children without going through that due process. Thank you. Um, Assembly member, I, I can hear the passion in your voice. And, and, and I, I resonate with that. Because I think, and I would assume that the vast majority of parents in this room feel that passion too for their children and want to be there to support their children. And I think one of the challenges uh, to the witness that you bring up, and I fully appreciate you wanting your child to have this safe space, uh, we also have to understand that our kids make a lot of decisions uh, where parents need to be involved to give guidance. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking about, uh, you know, in the case of teenagers especially, we're talking about students who don't always know what the right decision is and need guidance, whether it's on drugs, whether it's on, uh, you know, figuring out relationships between other peers. I mean, there are a whole host of things where I think we would say that I don't necessarily want to wait for my child to come to me with that. I want, to, I want a teacher, and in many cases, teachers will inform parents that their child is being bullied at school, their child is struggling academically. They want to engage parents, bring them in to help support them through that. And so that is, my, my concern with this bill right now is that it almost makes this assumption that parents will not do that. And I think that is, uh, yeah. as a form of public policy, not the direction that I would like to see us go. But 
I will switch gears a little here because I, I want to ask you about something uh, to clear up what you, something you said earlier in response to my colleague's question. So just so I'm clear, is it your testimony that this bill would not prohibit information from being shared to a parent on a voluntary basis? That is correct. It's okay. not always, the bill does not do that. There is you, some judgment that needs to be afforded. Okay. So, so just for example, if a teacher or administrator independently has information, chooses to share that information about a student to their parents, is, will that be allowable under this bill? Yes. Okay. I just want to make it clear that that, you know, on record, we, we know that that is not something that the bill attempts to, to take away. Uh, so I, I assume in the same way, I know there's a provision in this bill that talks about uh, retaliation cannot come to those who choose not to share information, correct? I believe that's in the yes. legislation. So in the same way, you know, there won't be retaliation to teachers who choose or administrators who choose to share information. I know we've had some issues with these lawsuits, and that's why I'm asking, because I want to make sure that there wouldn't be retaliation in those cases either. The re well, the lawsuits have demonstrated and upheld uh, the individual's um, position, and, and restitution is afforded. So I, I think it's pretty clear how the law is interpreted on this question. Okay. So I think my last line of questioning, I just, I want to, I, I really want to dive into and figure out, you know, I, I appreciate the testimony of your witnesses, but where is the line between sharing with parents and actively hiding information from parents? And I think that's where I still have a lot of kind of questions. So just to consider a scenario, and, and I think this was somewhat spoken to, but I want to get a little more clarity on it. So Hypothetically, if a student has changed their name and their gender identity at school and their teacher is aware of this information but the parents are not and they enter into a parent-teacher conference, how is that teacher going to refer to that child in that parent-teacher conference? If they, you know, is it per these changes? Is it per, you know, uh, different information? I mean, what, what is supposed to, what is the teacher supposed to do in that situation? could say something like your child is doing very well and needs to improve in math. So, oh. but again, you know, I mean, I think we've probably both been in parent teacher conferences. They're they're quite a bit more personal than that. You know, they dive into pronouns are obviously talked about, names are mentioned. How is a teacher supposed to refer to that child in in those moments? Can I say this is, first of all, an incredibly rare case when that would happen, but Par I know teachers who tell me... Who wrote the bill, him or you? So, Hold on. so excuse me. So, so just, just to clarify, uh, we're in parent-teacher conferences every year with our kids' teachers. So, uh, you know, when you say it's a rare circumstance, it's a rare circumstance where... Where the parent would not know the pronoun being used. You're already okay. talking about an incredibly rare circumstance. Um, furthermore, you know... I would refer to her to, but I can tell you, I have teachers who will tell me they will use generalized pronouns in when they go to those scenarios. But those scenarios are so rare that I could not even point to very many of them. As a current teacher, could I refute that point? <coughs> this is not. If Mr. Hooper this wants is through the chair. Yes. So that is not a rare occurrence. Every year I have more and more students who identify by a different name and pronouns at school. And mostly these are young lesbian students who are afraid and have an internalized homophobia and do not want to accept their female to female attraction. And very few teachers have been LGB activists as I have been and understand that gender dysphoria and body dysmorphia and disassociation, dissociation from the body. That is the second time. I'm going to ask the sergeant to escort you out of the hearing room. Thank you. <laughs> Please proceed. Okay. So many of our daughters and our sons 
are struggling with other things going on, which is what I spoke about. There are other issues here. Some of it is societal homophobia. Sometimes it is internalized homophobia. And as our um, representative discussed, it can be really, really difficult as a young person realizing that you are same-sex attracted. And now you may be bombarded on social media with, well, perhaps your body is wrong, and that's the issue, that you're really <coughs> not a young lesbian, but you're male. Thank you. And, you're, and so I think that we need to really understand the difference between trans ideation in our young people and what it is to come out as a gay person. I don't know if a student is truly gay. I can only guess. It's not my job or business to know that. And we don't, we're not talking about outing gay students. We're talking about students who are choosing a new name and pronoun at school where everybody in the community knows except the parents. And often the parent is the one who knows the child the best and understands possible former trauma that happened to their kids or what the reasons might be, but we have to bring that parent into it. Thank, it, thank you. Um, I just want to ask, uh, just go back to a question of the witness because you know this. You, you mentioned using generalized pronouns uh, in these situations. Is it your typical practice to use generalized pronouns it, on all I of your students? I can tell you, my typical practice is I have never ever had this situation <clears throat> happen with a with a parent. I've never had to sit down with a parent and have this conversation. What, w what I am dealing with at my site is these hypotheticals. I don't have a student in my class currently that's dealing with this. I had a student at one point whose parent knew of their um, transgender situation, and so there were conversations being had there. I think grace needs to happen on both sides, and I think that's what this bill does. Instead of forcing us to out our students, it gives grace to both sides so that we as teachers can talk to parents about it if that child thinks that they're ready to tell the parent and if we see something and, and that we know that it's a safe place for them. I deal with alt ed students. Most of my students aren't even homed by a parent. They are not with biological parents. So to put them in a situation like that where I am writing a letter home to their you know, whoever they're staying with, their temporary guardian, that can be dangerous in so many, so many ways for those students. And we know the statistics about um, students that are homeless live among the LGBTQ community. And it's because it is unsafe for them to tell certain people in their home about their gender identity. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I, I'm going to uh, interject for a moment here. Yeah. We've spent an hour and 40 minutes on, on this bill. We have 20 more bills to go. I encourage this committee to uh, uh, keep comments, questions uh, concise, all the witnesses, uh, so that we can move on. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may, I'll, I'll close my, my comments, if that works for you. Uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate the responses. Look, I, I, I think this is my concern. We, um, in fact, you know, the witnesses just spoke to this point. Every parent-teacher conference I've ever been in, my child's name has been used, my child's mm -hmm. pronouns have been used. Sure. This idea that if you were in this situation where there was a situation where a teacher had knowledge of something and a parent did not, that you would even have a conversation about using generalized pronouns in that discussion to avoid that information being shared. In my mind, that is actively hiding information from parents. And, and when you have a situation where, and again, this is all about finding where this line is between being required to share with parents, which I understand your perspective on that, I get that, but then actively hiding information from parents as a teacher who is regularly engaging with that parent about their student, I think this bill opens the door in a way that I am not comfortable with, and so we'll not be able to support the bill today. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions, Ms. Bonta? Uh, Assembly Member Ward, I want to thank you for bringing forward this bill. Um, I am a mother of an LGBTQ child, and I couldn't imagine her not being able to know that her school was safe in all aspects of her identity. And I think this bill is very straightforward, to be honest with you. 
it allows for an opportunity for teachers and educators not to be put in a position to disclose information that they are actually not really at the end of the day trained fully to be able to acknowledge, support, uh, and be involved in that. The, the part of this testimony from the opposition that I find the most troubling is this notion that parents stop being parents when their children are in school. That parents don't have the ability to communicate with their children every single moment of their lives. And what a parent chooses to do with their ability to communicate with their child is frankly on them. We want to be able to ensure that our schools are safe. We want to be able to ensure that educators are safe in the, in, in the basic function of teaching our children. And this is a very straightforward bill in allowing us to be able to do that. I want to thank you for making sure that my child and children who are in our schools, who are LGBTQ, have the ability to feel safe in their schools by bringing forward this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Addis? Thank you. Uh, well, I just, I want to deeply, deeply thank you, Assembly Member. I think your class act and uh, really appreciate your demeanor in the face of everything you've listened to today. I want to thank your witnesses as well uh, for your expertise. I too am a teacher and a mom. I was in the classroom for over a decade. I worked with students with special needs, immigrant families, taught K-12, summer admin, I'm a mandated reporter. Uh, and I want to echo what Assemblymember Bonta just said. I too was going to say this bill is very straightforward. I have to say first and foremost, though, um, that there's nothing wrong with being trans. It's, it's not a pathology. And I didn't realize sitting up here how emotional it would be um, to say what I'm saying. But I think we have to recognize we're talking about kids and about humans. We're not, and yes, we cite the data, and yes, we have a lot of opinions, but there's really nothing wrong with kids being who they are. And so I want to appreciate this bill. I think it does recognize that children deserve to be who they are, that they need safe places to learn, and that we do rely on teacher expertise. It's important that teachers have the knowledge they need. This bill does that. It provides resources, and it gives teachers a choice. And it's incredibly important that we recognize uh, that kids need that safe adult who does have a choice to know when to disclose information uh, and when to navigate a situation in a different way. So that's why I seconded this bill. It's why I support the bill. I want to thank you. Thank the LGBT caucus uh, for your bravery and your steadfastness. I wrote two op-eds last year about support for LGBT uh, people in my community because of the rhetoric that was going on. And I know you've worked on this issue for a very, very long time uh, and just want to appreciate your work. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no further questions or comments from the committee, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ward. Uh, thank you to witnesses on both sides, uh, as well as everyone. Uh, who all had an opportunity to be heard today. Um, I, for me, the bottom line uh, is that our schools should be a safe and supportive place for all students. And, you know, while uh, we've talked about this, in an ideal world, uh, teachers, staff uh, should be able to, uh, you know, communicate openly with, with their uh with the parents about uh, the well-being of the child. Uh, we uh, know that, unfortunately, we don't always deal with situations where uh, households are supportive of a, a child's uh, gender identity. And uh, for that reason, uh, uh, you know, I, I, as a parent myself, I mean, I would like to think that if my child was having 
you know, was, was exploring gender identity issues, that I would be talking to my child and I would not be relying on teachers or school staff to tell me, you know, issues, whether my child is exploring gender identity uh, issues. And so, you know, in order to protect all students, uh, to, to provide a safe and supportive environment for all students, uh, I will be supporting this bill. Mr. Ward, thank you for your courage in bringing this uh, measure forward. You have the last word. Thank you. I think we've had a long, a, a pretty thorough discussion here, and I almost wanted to start to think about things to close, but honestly had to echo so many of the things that were talked about here as well. And for the complexities around this conversation that have happened here today and certainly many days and out in the community before, things get a little bit a little bit muddy, a little, a little bit confusing out there. And so we try sometimes just to really simplify and crystallize what, we, what, what does this bill actually do or what are we trying to achieve here? And the fundamental, I think, thread that we want to see for all California students and all California schools is that, to your point, they deserve a safe, and a safe environment in which to learn. And some of that is informed, sure, by surveys and research and best practices. Um, but importantly, we've, over the last almost a year now, been thrust into this space about what is the best approach when it comes to a requirement, a, a requirement to have to forcibly out somebody? We've almost had a pilot program and been able to test that in certain communities across California, and it's not gone well. It has torn the apart the fabric of these communities. It has put teachers in a very awkward space. It has turned school board meetings, maybe enjoyably by some, uh, into an absolute circus and away from the core mission of having to talk about the bread and butter of, of, of fulfilling that district's uh, mission. Um, it has cost a lot of money and through a lot of lawsuits. And again, if that's something that some are willing to be able to expend with the limited resources that we debate annually, um, that's not, not good. That is gonna disadvantage and leave some students and some school districts behind. And so that is why we are at a place now of over the last 12 months learning about what these policies do and saying, that is not the direction that we want to go, that we need to have a uniform policy that says what we do and we don't do. And I've heard as well, based on some of the court conversations around here, and I want to thank again the leadership of the Attorney General and the Superintendent of Public Instruction who have been with us to really stand up for and, and vet some of these questions. Um, through that conversation, you know, ambiguities in law have, have kind of come up and, and, and some have art articulated that it's the lack of statutory guidance that you know is still at play here, and so I have a statutory proposal, mm -hmm. and I ask for respectfully for your I vote in AB 1955. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Secretary. Uh, mo motion's been made and seconded. Please call the roll. File item one, AB 1955. The motion is to concur in the Senate amendments. Marisucci. Aye. Marisucci. Aye. Flora. No. Flora. No. Addis. Aye. Addis. Aye. Alvarez. Fonta. Aye. Fonta. Aye. Hoover. No. Hoover. No. McCarty. Three, uh, three eyes, two nose, the bill is on call. Thank you very much.